Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to get started because there's quite a bit of material to cover. So I did want to kick off pretty much on time. So I wanted to thank everybody uh, for joining. Just to clarify, um, just wanted to make it clear that this is a repeat session from one that we ran a couple of months ago, specifically focused on uh, automating submission content preparation, report generation, et cetera, where the content is stored in Viva. So anybody who did join the last session, just to be clear, this is um, a repeat, if you like, of that. Uh, with that said, um, I did just want to go through, um, obviously, what we're going to cover very briefly. Just want to explain, introduce kind of the concept of why some of, some of this automation, some of the areas where these processes um, can be automated, and some of the, the pain points you may feel already, and then kind of focus on some different use cases. Uh, one of them being starting from the original source content, uh, how you can automate some of your source documents in Word format content preparation. So before you even convert it in, into PDF for inclusion and in a submission, things that you could do at a word level um, to help automate uh, the process as well. We'll look at how uh, you can automate sort of creation of multiple global renditions. So as well as creating a single PDF rendition from source content, being able to create multiple renditions that are not only viewable renditions uh, as you'd get with the Viva uh, viewable rendition, they're actually compliant, fully compliant PDF renditions as well. So we kind of look at how that can be done as well. Look at how you could automatically generate reports uh, that may feed into submissions later on, or maybe you know just completely separate corporate reports as well, but how those can be automatically uh, created without the need for any human interaction whatsoever. And how you can actually sort of look at your PDF content, analyze it, and look for any uh, specification or PDF related issues at a PDF level, whether that was created by DocShifter, whether it's created by Viva's own rendering tech, created manually in Acrobat, et cetera, as well. So we'll look at how you can sort of analyze for issues in PDFs and automatically fix them potentially as well. And we'll look at some other ad hoc use cases also at the end. Again, the idea here is before we start, we, we have kind of taken everybody's names and uh, we had a number of hundreds of registrants. So every 25th registrant is going to receive a small gift from our side. So if you do receive an email message asking for some contact details, it's just so we could send you that small gift. So it isn't spam, it is a request. So we can send you a quick um, gift on our side. It's nothing like the fancy car underneath uh, the black hood. I don't wanna get into trouble like Pepsi did with a jump jet. Um, so we're not gonna be shipping you a car, but it is a small gift just uh, on our behalf. So with that, just a quick intro in terms of what we're looking at, really the challenges you face, whether the content resides in Viva Vaults, and this session is completely focused on um, how we can handle content stored in Viva Vaults. We're not a platform that's installed in Vault. It's completely separate from Viva. Uh, however, it does integrate with Viva and other repositories as well. This session is focused on you know, where the content resides in Vault. It could be in other repositories too, like Documentum, SharePoint, you know, Cara, et cetera, as well. Um, but we're focusing here specifically on Viva. So some of the challenges you may face, you know, obviously in terms of the process for preparing that content, obviously typically processes are quite slow and resource intensive, often because they're manual processes. They involve manually opening up individual documents, looking at, you know, looking for issues, fixing things manually or in batch using various tools and plugins, et cetera, as well. But often there's a human element involved making it manual. So that does make it slow. And obviously anything that's manual does introduce an element of risk as well of any human error. Anything you perform manually, there's a slightly higher risk of that. So obviously you're looking at, you know, introducing elements of risk. The process is typically more complex than it need be. You know, if you're using tools or using, for example, very large submission publishing tools to create simple reports, obviously there's a complexity there that's unnecessary and that does incur a greater uh, training burden as well uh, because of that because of the tools, or it may just be complex because you're using lots of tools, manual tools that you have to train people how to use as well. So it can become quite complex uh, as well. So just some of the challenges that we're looking to address with some of this automation. So just to explain what DocShifter is, ultimately it's a, a platform, a software platform that's used for any to any digital format conversion and enrichment. So it can be used in many different ways. I'll speak about the different functionality and then see the different use cases where the content resides in Viva Vault uh, as well. But ultimately, we're looking at taking content from one location in Viva, 
or anywhere else. We analyze the content and transform it potentially in, you know, from one format to another or report on it. We enrich the content if we've converted it and we output the results back into Vault or somewhere else. Um, it is scalable, so it can suit the needs of any size organization, not only very large pharma, it can be down to the very smallest biotech as well and anywhere in between at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, that's what we look to do. As I say, it's a software platform that is completely separate from Viva, um, but as I say, it does integrate uh, with it um, as well as other repositories also. So just to explain, obviously a lot of people talk about the rendering side of it or rendering tools, which obviously DocShift is seen as one of those. Um, and just to explain that it is far more than just file format conversion, converting from one format to another. That's an element of it. It's taking content from different repositories, including Viva Vault, but as I say, it could be other uh, repositories too, from many different file formats and then doing something with them. If, for example, in converting to PDF, but also additional capabilities like checking, validating the Word document for issues. So validating your source content, you know, checking, you know, making your content text searchable, sort of OCRing the content. So it's not only just a flat image, it also has searchable text in it in the PDF. Being able to merge multiple files together into single files, you know, that that's to, you know, to get the correct granularity within your submissions or for the generation of reports. You can also split files as well, so that as well as, you know, creating lots of files that maybe ex exceed, that may exceed industry uh, health authority guidelines, you can actually split them automatically so they kind of meet those uh, guidelines as well, all those restrictions. You're also able to add headers and footers and pagination as well. So if the document has no pagination or you need additional info in the header or footer, you can apply that. And it may be slightly different where you use the same content in different kind of submissions globally as well. You can add watermarks, you know, to ensure that it's people are aware when a document's still in draft stage uh, as well. You can ensure that that's clear. Add, you know, make sure you've got clear bookmarks to aid navigation through your results. Add cover pages you know, to whether it's reports or whatever it may be, tables of contents can be included as well. You know, security can be either applied or removed as well from your content. And then you can validate your PDF content as well to make sure that it meets the needs of the health authority where it's going to be shared. And basically you can use, you know, different combinations of those capabilities for different use cases, whether that's to create health uh, authority compliant results, whether it's preparing content to go into an archive, whether it's creating a report. A report, basically, you can just combine different capabilities to combine, to merge multiple files together, to add overlays, to give it pagination and add tables of contents, cover pages, et cetera. All those things you could do with the rendering tool on an individual document, you can do together to generate reports as well. Kind of merge everything, merge multiple documents, plus apply to TLCs, across the whole report, et cetera, as well. So we'll look at some of those examples. So ultimately, the rendering platform is far more, and we're going to see how DocShifter can be used in many different ways other than just for the actual conversion itself. So really what we're looking at doing is creating a workflows that do different things. So we take content and we define where is the starting point, what's the trigger, if you like, for the activity in the workflow. And these are set up in the background. Users don't need to do this. This just defines, configures the automation. They say, where's the content that needs to be processed and what should you do with it, when? And you can leverage the metadata that's available in your repository in Viva Vault to help drive the automation. So depending on the values of different repository, the content type, the, you know, the values of any of your pieces of metadata can help route things through your workflow to different areas so you get the results that you need without having to then further manipulate the document at the end. And we'll talk about some cases there where we do that. But ultimately, these workflows are set up. They're, run, they're running in the background, and there's no human interaction at all. So they're fully automated. Just to be clear, I'm going to slog on through the use cases. But if you do want, I'm going to go through quite high level or very high level, if you like. Um, if you do want to see anything in more detail, please reach out. There should be some details in the chat where you can reach out for a follow-up uh, demo as well. So just to start off with, maybe looking at the original source content, the Word content itself, there's a lot of things that we can look for automatically. So automatically, at various points in time, you could check for issues in the Word source content. Even before you begin any con uh, conversion, 
you can look for issues in you know paragraphs you know empty paragraphs or headings or you know line break issues and so on or page break issues issues with bookmarks and fonts and tables and styles of text etc and images there's a lot of issues we can identify at source so before we even begin converting we can help you kind of fine tune the word documents so there are less issues that you need to go back to the original source to update later on so if we look at that we uh, can build simple workflows that you know from can monitor any viva repository they can integrate to your existing life cycles as well so you could obviously help automate it just leveraging standard viva life cycles but then we engage at the times that you define in the workflow and ultimately what we do is define which checks do you want to perform so there's a number of checks you can perform on the word documents and depending on the type of documents or different, you know, what categories of documents, you can perform different checks with different expected results as well and different fixes if you want also. So it's either going to create a report um, of all the issues that it finds or actually a fixed version of the document where possible. So if we take a look at this simple workflow, it's the simplest of workflows in that it's just three steps. We're basically monitoring a Viva repository we're just looking for a specific status for the content and just doing this in very simple terms here just looking for this ready to be processed state status to be released uh, to uh, to be achieved on a document whenever that occurs we're then going to perform the checks the second step in the workflow and we're going to perform whatever checks it is you've told it to in this configuration so what do you want to do do you just want to check and report on the issues do you want to perform a certain type of fix you can configure exactly how that works. So it's very simple, off and on, on check, and how do you want to fix it? And then the results can go back into Viva as well, um, or somewhere else if you wanted to, you could have the results go somewhere else. Uh, and in this case, we were actually going to store the results in this image um, as a rendition to the document. So it's a, a different rendition type. So you could you know, output the results as any rendition type. So it's not replacing your rendition itself, but we're actually creating a PDF report showing you the results of the of its findings for that word analysis um, as a rendition type, because it's a PDF report showing you some summaries of what the findings are. So you could do it that way, or you could just create it as a completely new object within Viva Vault as well, in a separate area where you have all of your analysis reports as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at doing, three simple steps. If you look at how that works, it looks in Viva itself, I take a sample Word document and I basically change the status and I'm doing it manually here. It could obviously be more automated in your life cycles, but we're going to basically move this document on from draft to be ready to be processed, which is the status I'm looking for in my workflow. So the moment that status is reached, DocShifter picks the document up automatically on the DocShifter side, which is outside of Eva. Um, it basically takes it to an in-processing state, which just ensures that we don't pick it up multiple times. So it knows it's processing that file. Um, and then it basically gets to the point where it's processed by DocShift or whatever lifecycle state you wanted to uh, in the site. It doesn't have to be processed by DS. It, it could be some other status that you define in the workflow. And basically, in this case, I've stored the results of that report as a different rendition type. In this case, it's the imported rendition. I'm just using that one as a sample, an example. Um, to, to show you storing the results of the report as a rendition. As I say, it could be a separate doc document completely. And that PDF report itself is just a summary of all the findings. It's basically a list summarizing the number of checks performed, how many issues there were. And I can see a detailed breakdown of every single check performed. Uh, in this case, there were 31 ran, how many of each issue it found, uh, how many were corrected, and how many were actually left unresolved. In this case, I didn't correct any because I was just creating a report in this case. And then a breakdown of all the detail from the findings. So I can see everywhere where it found an issue, where is the issue that it found in the source document, that where's the highlighted text remaining, which often could be you know, guidance text, for example, where do you have cross-reference issues, uh, heading numbering issues, images, image issues, hyperlink problems, table issues, uh, bookmark issues, et cetera, et cetera, paragraph issues, and so on. So, you get the detailed breakdown of every single issue that it finds in the document in this report. So that's great. You can get a report and then you can use that to fix the document or the author can or whoever's responsible for resolving word content issues. The other option is to actually perform a fix on many of those issues as well. Some issues need human interaction. They would need somebody to actually uh, go in and update the word document. 
but there are many that we can automatically fix as well. So in this case, I've got a very simple, clearly very non-regulatory document, um, but it just shows you some example issues. You may have issues with hyperlinks. You have heading numbers out of sequence. It goes one first heading to three second heading. You got empty paragraphs. We have a watermark remaining, tables that aren't using the full width of the page, images not in line, comments remaining, etc. So various issues. And all this would do is if we'd set the workflow up to fix the document, it would return a fixed version of this with all those issues resolved. So any uh, hyperlink issues resolved, depending on what you told it to do. Um, heading numbers are now in sequence again. Um, I have my empty paragraphs have been removed. Uh, watermarks have been removed behind the page. You'll notice the tables now fitting the width of the page. Um, I've got white spaces removed from headings, uh, et cetera, comments removed and images in line. So ultimately can fully fix the document as well for any of the things that we can identify. So that's the first thing is really looking at, we can look at the source content itself and actually perform, you know, check for issues and fix them. Moving on to the next step, and I know that's very high level. So again, you know, just reach out if you'd like more details. Um, but we've also then can obviously, in the terms of creating the renditions, we create them in a different way to, we're not creating them to be a viewable rendition, we're creating them to be a compliant a rendition or health authority ready a rendition, if you like. So what we do here is we take content and we create one or we can create one or multiple renditions, depending on where that content is going to be used. We can either create just one and you may have a consistent PDF spec for multiple regions, in which case, yes, you still only need one, but you may want to create slightly different PDFs for different regions where there are differences in the requirements. So obviously you can do that as well if that's what you choose to do. So again, one in, potentially multiple renditions out. And what we'd have is a simple workflow that looked again, monitors for specific status, lifecycle status for the doc up for the content. And then it performs various checks to say, do I need, in this case, a Japanese rendition? Do I need a European rendition? Do I need an, a US, Swiss, Canadian rendition? If the answer is yes on any of these, it basically takes the route through the workflow and creates a rendition to meet the needs of that specific health authority especially where they are differ slightly. So again, especially Japan may have a different grouping of the bookmarks uh, compared to the FDA and Europe, et cetera, as well. So there can be some differences there. So what we're doing is just looking at each of these steps. We're just looking for the value of a piece of metadata um, on, you know, on the document itself to say, is a Japanese rendition required? And it could just be a simple piece of metadata available on the document that captures that info. If it's true, then it will take and create a, a Japanese rendition, et cetera, for each region. So again, we're really leveraging metadata as much as possible. Then when it actually creates the rendition, it has a whole series of parameters for how that PDF needs to be created. You know, how, what are the book, how should the bookmarks be created? You know, how the hyperlinking, the font embedding, how the images should be handled, the PDF specifications and version, et cetera. So there's a whole heap of uh, parameters you can set. Most of them will be same from one region to another, but it can be slight differences between them, whether that's between different countries or if you're a CRO or a service provider, your individual clients may have slight different requirements for the PDFs that they're expecting to receive back from you. So you could have different output requirements you know, to automate it for different customers too. So what you get at the end of that is a, as I take a, an individual document. So I take a single Word document in this case. Again, I just changed the status to be, I'm using the same example here, ready to be processed. I it was ready to be processed. It automatically moves on to in processing as we pick it up and then processed by DocShifter at the end. What you then end up with is your PDF rendition that is fully compliant with that health authority or those health authority kind of requirement, those specifications. As I say, you know, what's the Japanese one could be slightly different from the US one in terms of the, P, the bookmarking structure and the, the PDF version, et cetera. So again, reducing the amount of manual effort involved where multiple health authorities require the same content to be used. So that's just a simple case with, with the renditions. Again, very brief intro. Again, if you can let us know if you want more info. The, in terms of automating the report generation, we're really leveraging a lot of those capabilities I spoke about at the beginning and combining them to give you the ability to generate reports fully automatically without the need for a publishing tool or a separate tool or manual tools and manual merging of content together. So if I look at this, I'm able to, again, leverage 
um, elements like binders in Viva or zip files, if you like, as well, to basically define the content that needs to be included in that report. That's the only thing that's left in terms of you know manual step involved is defining what the contents should be. Once that's defined, you can set statuses again that will kick off the activity, and you can define then define again further and say, well, depending on the type of report, you can take different routes. So a clinical report may include certain elements, talks, cover pages, certain different types of look and feel to headers, footers, et cetera, from CTD kind of components, if you like. They may do slightly different elements, and IMPD or other types of reports may have other elements included. So you've got three different routes depending on the type of activity, and it will only take the correct route. Again, fully automatically leveraging metadata. So what I'm going to do at that point is really look at leveraging the metadata to basically take that binder or the zip file at the very start of the process and fully automatically add all of these other components, depending on how you've configured it. So add, you know, convert each individual document within the binder or the zip file to a compliant PDF, um, sorting them into the correct order and then merging them together into single uh, PDF files, um, add cover pages as necessary and paginate if you need to, you get a report page number or volume number added. You can add headers and footers, including page numbers, et cetera, as well. Um, add the pie tables of contents that span the entire, uh, the entire report. Add watermarks. Um, and then make sure that the whole PDF or all the results are compliant before storing those results back into, into Viva Vault as well. But again, the only manual step is creating this binder at the beginning. The rest of it's fully automatically done. And at the end, you get a fully compliant individual PDF file with all the elements included, or one that's broken into pieces because you may have to kind of split it into multiple PDFs to, so you don't exceed file size limitations, et cetera, as well. So you can always split things. Again, fully automatically. So if I just take a, an example with uh, binders in this case, so I have a, an example binder with simply seven, uh, seven documents included inside it. Very simple, it could be Word, it could be a mixture of Excel, images, PowerPoints, it could be any different file formats in that binder, not just Word, it can be any uh, file format. We again change the status of the binder to be ready to be processed. And again, it would then pick it up and process the file. And you can see that uh, in this interim status. And again, ending up as processed by DocShifter or whatever status you've defined in your Viva uh, Vault repository. Once that's uh, reached that status, you've then got an individual and either one or multiple PDFs created, depending on if it was a single PDF or a multi-PDF uh, resulting report. Um, and that's created as a separate object because at the moment in Viva Vault, there's no concept of a rendition for binders. So we create that as a separate object that's categorized um, automatically. And you can either open that up and see it directly in Viva Vault. Uh, you can see obviously uh, the elements that have been added, cover pages, et cetera. I'll show you this in a little bit more detail shortly. But what we also do is kind of create a relationship between the resulting PDF and the binder that it was created from. So you're at least able to see that from the PDF file, what was the binder that was used you know, for as the content collection for those results as well. And those results can include many things. So for example, your cover page, which can include pieces of metadata from your repository as well. You can capture you know, report titles or health authorities that this is being submitted to, who was last modified by. Ultimately, you can design these cover pages to include whatever metadata is available to it. And that's automatically then included when that report is generated. You have bookmarks that span across all the documents that are included. So it's not just one, it's spanning all of them. And if it's split into multiple volumes, the report, it will only include the bookmarks that are off, you know, within that specific volume, if you like, or you can have it include all the bookmarks in every single volume. It's up to you. We can also, obviously, would also have tables of contents added, again, that hyperlink to the relevant sections. And again, those were originally separate individual documents. We've now got a TLC that spans the entire collection. And everything is compliant. So you've got bookmarks and hyperlinks that are you know, set to inherit Zoom. All your PDF versions, et cetera, are compliant as well. So again, very quick look at how you could automatically generate reports. As I say, no manual steps involved there whatsoever. We can then look at how we can automate the PDF content validation. 
uh, very similar to Word in that, you know, when you've got a PDF, no matter how it was created, whether we created in DocShifter or if it's created, uh, well, or your DocShift environment was used to create it, or your Viva Vault was your viewable rendition, or if it was a uh, PDF created in Acrobat or by an external company, you're then able to look at that and analyze the PDF for any issues, whether or not you have any security on the PDF file, for example, you know, if things are password protected, you may want to ensure that that's highlighted as well. So you can identify files that are password protected or have some kind of security on them. You can check that, you know, for specific, the, the correct PDF version, they're optimized in the right way. You don't have any bookmark issues or hyperlink issues or font embedding issues, et cetera. So there's a series, a large series of uh, checks that we can perform. And again, we can detail that more separately if you need as well. So what we do here is, again, the same thing. We build a workflow. In this case, again, a simple workflow that says, okay, when should I sort of perform this action? And again, it could be a separate standalone workflow, or it could be a part of a rendition workflow. You could have a workflow that creates a PDF file from Word and then actually performs your checks from the PDF automatically as well as, an, as a separate step, as an additional step in the same workflow. But they can be separate or combined. Ultimately, the re results, either the report can be generated in vaults or a fixed PDF can be as well. There's a lot of the things that we find that we can automatically fix as well. So in this case, we're looking at you know, creating a report that simply summarizes all of the results that it finds on the PDF. So I go through, I've got a number of checks that were performed. This is like your submission checklist, your content checklist that you perform on typically each of your files, how you do that. Obviously, it may differ, but at the end of the day, you typically check each PDF file going into the submission to make sure it's really submission ready. In this case, it's really more is it health authority ready? You know, is it does it meet the needs you know of the health authority? You know, almost as if it's been published. If you like the PDF file, so has the PDF is the PDF version correct? It's saying no, that's failed. It's not optimized. That's failed. Number of checks may have passed. Some may have failed as well. So again, a quick summary saying of all the checks that it was asked to run, whether they passed or failed. And where they failed, you then get details of what the failure was, what fonts weren't embedded correctly, where do you have bookmarks, which bookmarks have issues, which hyperlinks are the wrong color, for example, in this case, um, you know, where you have text that is blue, but maybe isn't a hyperlink yet, and so on, or where you have hyperlink issues. All of those are identified in the report for you to fix. And again, some of those issues you could have automatically fixed as well. So again, I won't show that use case. It's a similar flow to the rest that I showed you. Just quickly, some other use cases. So again, we spoke a lot about a number, you know, these the, the main products of uh, DocShift, the PDF Plus, Doc Validator, PDF Validator, and Reports. But we can also output to other formats other than PDF. So we can output to XML, HTML. We can take legacy documents like old .doc or RTF files, convert them to DocX, and so on. We can use any to any to do that as well. So it's not only PDF. Um, we can also ingest emails as well. Uh, so we'll monitor inboxes and automatically store the results, the message itself, and any attachments, and categorize them and store them directly in Viva Vault as well. So it can be used to help with correspondence tracking as well. And then we have elements of OCR, so we can automatically OCR the content and get some insights and metrics on usage as well. But one use case, for example, I mentioned it's not only Viva Vault we support, we support other repositories like SharePoint, Documentum, file shares, et cetera. You can, for example, have a workflow that monitors, in this case, a SharePoint folder. And then depending on the type of file, it will process it separately. It could be a CAD diagram, could be audio, video format, converting from one format to another, or a PDFA ready to go into an archive. And then those results all then get pushed into Viva Vault. So they start in one repository type, and they end up being manipulated in some way, and then the results stored into your Vault repository. So it can help with forms of migration as well, content migration. In terms of the insights, this is just your way of seeing what content uh, is being processed, how much is the system being used. If you're CRO or if, you've got, if you're sharing the cost of platforms between different uh, departments or to different companies, if you're a provider, uh, you could see how much each customer or each department has processed content as well, or what kind of content, what times of day, are you actually processing so you can identify periods of the day when you perhaps aren't you're not realizing you're not processing anything you can bring servers if they're hosted down to save on infrastructure costs as well including fonts that are used in your documents as well so you can ensure you're licensing fonts correctly as well um 
So those are various things we can use in addition to the main use cases. So really the idea is a lot of what we do is, is all aimed at reducing risk, really streamlining your process and accelerating your content preparation uh, processes by automating many of them. A lot of them aid uh, the, the goal of simultaneous global submissions. And really what we always aim to achieve really in our case is achieving content compliance earlier, not having to wait until the publishing time before you really get a final PDF that is going to be shared with the health authority, maybe manipulated earlier on, but the final PDF in many cases isn't created till the end. What we hopefully allow you to do is achieve that level of compliance much earlier so you can identify issues earlier and achieve that compliance much earlier in your process. The whole aim being to reduce risk. And again, all of that's done through a series of automated workflows. So with that, I just wanted to um, highlight a couple of things. So thank you for those who stuck on. Sorry, I'm running about a minute late here. I uh, just want to highlight, we do have some available proof of concepts if anybody's interested in a more formal kind of testing. So right now, I just wanted to highlight, we do have some open slots for proof of concepts. If anybody is interested, please just let us know. Or if you just want to sort of discuss any of the topics in more detail, obviously let us know there as well. But obviously if you perform a proof of concept, you can then test in your own environments with your own content in, within your own infrastructure as well. So please let us know. Um, I believe Alp has a quick poll question for anybody who's still on the line. I don't know if you could bring that up out very briefly. So I'll just leave this up and running for a moment uh, while I just thank everybody for joining. Um, again, thank you for taking part and uh, staying sort of till the end of the evening. And I wish everybody a good rest of your day. And please just reach out if you had any questions. And hopefully we'll see you at a future webinar. Uh, as I say, a lot of the topics that we've discovered are discussed here, we discuss in a lot more detail in other webinars as well. So if you do need anything, we can always give you recordings of previous webinars also. But I just want to thank everybody again for your time and see you again soon. Thank you very much.